The Great Lakes have been troubled for many years since the opening of the St. Lawrence Seaway uh, with the introduction of non-indigenous aquatic species. They're coming from primarily from Eastern Europe and the Black Sea. They're freshwater, brackish water animals that are carried across in ballast water and have been deposited into the Great Lakes. That's where the zebra mussel came from, the round goby, the ruff, which is another fish, as well as many smaller uh, animals that have come in and have upset the food chain, changed the food chain, and altered the Great Lakes habitat. The idea of the ballast-free ship is to replace those tanks with longitudinal trunks that run below the ballast water line of the ship. It's basically a paradigm shift in how you do ballasting of ships and it's more following submarines than surface ships. What we're doing is opening part of the hull to the sea. And this will create a very slow flow through these trunks that go from the bow to the stern of the ship and therefore they're continually sweeping the water out and they're basically filled with local seawater, not hauling water from one part of the world to the other. Inside a 102-year-old testing tank on the University of Michigan Central Campus, researchers from the Department of Naval Architecture and Marine Engineering are testing a revolutionary new ship design that could significantly reduce problems caused by ocean-going cargo ships that dump ballast water in the Great Lakes. At least 185 non-native aquatic species have been identified in the Great Lakes, and ballast water is blamed for introducing most of them. Ships take on ballast water for stability when they're not carrying cargo. They discharge that ballast when they load freight, expelling tons of water and anything else from pathogenic microbes to mollusks and fish that's in it. In Congress and in state capitals across the Great Lakes region, momentum is building to require cargo ships to install costly sterilization systems to sanitize ballast water. The ballast-free ship concept, invented at the University of Michigan in 2001 and patented in 2004, offers a promising alternative that could save shippers money while eliminating hitchhiking organisms. Instead of hauling tanks of water from port to port, the ballast-free ship would create a constant flow of local seawater through a network of large pipes, called trunks, that runs from bow to stern below the waterline. The beauty of this approach really is its simplicity uh, and its potential effectiveness. I know that the U.S. Congress has currently uh, new legislation uh, in draft form that would require a ballast treatment discharge standard uh, and that would uh, most likely require uh, treatment technologies in addition to ballast water exchange which is the only current accepted treatment technology that's available. Some of those treatment technologies uh, involve uh, things like filtration or cavitation, uh, chemical uh, biocides, uh, heat, UV, uh, but one of the more innovative approaches uh, that's being proposed is this ballastless ship. This potential solution is decades away from being in full implementation. Uh, but, but again, so are most other treatment technology options. With funding from the Great Lakes Maritime Research Institute, Parsons and his colleagues built a 16-foot wooden scale model of an ocean-going bulk carrier. They're testing the model at the University of Michigan towing tank, the oldest facility of its kind operated by a U.S. educational institution. The major goal of the latest tests is to determine the best location for the intake and discharge ports that suck water into the hull near the bow and expel it from the stern. It seems that compared to other ballast treatment systems, it's a viable alternative. We have proven at least that the technical part is feasible and it can be applied to a new vessel construction. And we have also shown that regarding the economics, it can reduce the operating cost and reduce or even eliminate the introduction of non-indigenous aquatic species because the uh, 
water, the ballast water is going to be, at all times, it's going to be local water. It's not going to be water transport from one port to the other. There is no silver bullet, but I think it has the potential to be a, an economic winner as well as uh, addressing the ballast problem in a serious way. Thank you.